Greetings friends and a very warm welcome to you all. So imagine you just drove out of a Lamborghini dealership with your new Lamborghini and on the way home you wrapped it around a lamppost. Well a similar thing happened to this poor sod. A young Joey, not long after purchasing this gorgeous piece, he whacked his wrist against a brick wall while scoofing around with his mates. And do you know what he did then? You guessed it. He put his thumb in his mouth and curled up in the fetal position and he's still in that position to this day. I'm only kidding, he's moved on and has something else on his wrist. But has anyone given a thought about the poor watch and its well-being? The watch too had hopes and dreams when leaving the shop on his new owner's wrists. Hopes of making new memories, going out to dinner with the family, waking up together with him staring down at his wrist first thing in the morning, with a yawn full of morning breath and eyes full of eye bogey. There were two entities in this relationship involved in this breakup or smash-up. One is mended and has moved on, and the other one is still broken and has been forgotten. And we are all here to pick up the pieces. Oh, look at those poor bleeding hands. Looks like something out of a Salvador Dali painting, doesn't it? There's actually two hands there, one on top of the, the other. Pointer date. And the, the power reserve indicator. Got all that glass dust everywhere. So this is a Seiko Presage cocktail with this gorgeous violet plum dial and would have cost the owner between 500 to 700 pound. So not cheap for a Seiko and not cheap for a youngling's first watch purchase. Nice little crown. Look what we got here. Trying to do a restoration with me, yeah. My little fat hands. Still got its plastic film on it on the back. Now if you have a look at this strap, it looks like it's hardly been used. And this is the strap that came with the watch. It's got a little folding clasp. So you can see it's still got some of that factory film still on it. See, it's got some of the factory film there as well. It must be absolutely gutted. Oh well, so, although the dial has some scratches from all that glass, broken glass, we will reuse the dial and we'll sort those hands out. The only problem we're going to have is finding this box style hard lux glass which came with this model. It would be easier just to stick a double dome sapphire but those hands might be just a bit too high. The hard lux box style crystal is almost like a plexiglass and has that plexiglass dome effect. So I'll have to source one of those. Now this movement as well is quite an interesting movement. It has the power reserve and the pointer date. I'm not sure if the modding community use this. Uh, I think it's a NH57 or something like that. I'll check that. So it'd be interesting to service this with the power reserve and a pointer date. So let's crack on. Now up close in real life this violet dial looks gorgeous but sadly it is scratched up from the cracked glass. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. You can see that pointer seems to be okay. Power reserve. These are just scratched up a little bit. We'll sort those out later. Yeah, later. Loud and dearing. Pointer date. So these hands are a bit like mine. Bruised and battered, but only two of them need straightening, which I think is achievable with the gentle massage from my crusty hands. So, you can see how many places it's bent on this axis. It's shifted that way a little bit and bent here. It's gone psh, 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 and here it's gone. Psh, psh. So, let's do something with that. So you see I've got a little hole in my workbench, there's a bigger one and I'm going to put a little bit of plastic over it. So with that one small press I've managed to bring it up and now I want to turn it over and push it here and this time I don't really need a hole but because I want to protect the top surface of the hand this time i'll put it on the piece of plastic so that's where we are so far 
and then we have here and here we'll press it here and smoothen it out so you can see so again we can turn it over and put it on our piece of plastic so we protect the surface I'll keep rubbing it until I get it nice and straight my wooden surface has served its purpose and now I'm going to use a bit of flat steel I could have done it on that from the start but I needed a little hole I can take that up against the edge now we've straightened it all out now we just have to fiddle around with it a little bit more to straighten out that whole tail end and now I can butt it up against the edge again so you don't have to see my disgusting fingers you can even use the hand press tool to hold it down with that's good so I think that's pretty good that way but now if we look at it straight on we can see that it's slightly going straight down and then it's going this way a little bit so I'm just gonna, gonna hold it here and push it that way So you can see on this case back, we still have that factory film on it. And check out this movement. You can see already bits of glass dust. That's the reason why we're servicing it. This movement would have hardly had any use, but all that glass dust will be inside there for sure. So it's best to strip it all out and give it a good clean just in case otherwise that glass dust will start grinding stuff down we'll set and leave a nib just there I can already see bits of glass glass is glued in on this one I'm not going to try and scrape that off and scratch the case up so what I'll do is I'll put that in some dip and hopefully that should loosen up all that adhesive so I'm just trying to study this thing. It's got an outer ring and an inner one, but there are no screws holding it down. Which is friction fitted on, you can see. Two dial feet there. They are friction fitted into these two holes. We can roll that on the cushion. And then we can just push that movement out, I think, from the front. Like so and we'll give all that a nice clean to get rid of all this glass dust it's so clean everything is just so new this shouldn't have been serviced for the next three to five years but here we are it's a long screw a bit of glass there now i want to go back on the other side because there's quite a lot going on on the other side so we'll just take that off makes it a bit easier to put it into the movement holder so i haven't worked on this movement before so you can just see the methodology how i approach it and usually you just take your time step by step and just try and see what's going on where so we know that here we've got a cover and when we've got a cover, that means there's a lot going on underneath. It's not just the case of, oh look, there's the keyless works and there's the motion works. And because we have a power reserve and a pointer, it's all tidily waiting for us 
underneath all this. And that was four screws. Let's gently take this off so we don't disturb anything. So we can see. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, there's a lot of stuff here that's come off. And this is the rest of it. So let's transfer over all the wheels and pinions from the underside of the cover plate just so that we can see everything in its position okay so that's how it all supposed to sit take some notes of what goes where and obviously there are diagrams available for this and now we can dismantle it again the barrel arbor pinion planetary reduction wheel intermediate power reserve wheel And that is actually the second sun wheel. That's the sun and planet unit. And that is the sun wheel. And now we can take off that big fat center power reserve wheel. It looks pretty mean. And we've got the intermediate center power reserve wheel. The dial washer, even though the dial doesn't sit on that. Comes off next. That's the date star. There's the date driving wheel. Ah, the date jumper here. Looks quite flimsy that. Date correcting setting unit. Which looks like a spores on a cowboy's boots. Date correcting setting wheel. Where you gone? Make sure when you put it back, put it back one way. Auxiliary main plate screw. Did I loosen that? I must have loosened that. Bit of a sandwich this one, isn't it? Look at all the oil from this factory movement. That's just come off onto my mat. Now we can remove the hour wheel. So that is the hour wheel. And that's that. Minute wheel and pinion. Okay, there's the cannon pinion. Whoa, that's long. That's a pipe, that is. Date corrector setting transmission wheel B. So where's A? Don't know. Now we can dismantle the, the other side. So on this side, we'll start off with the automatic train bridge. So this caliber is a 4R57A, which first appeared in Seiko's in 2016, but the 4R family range has been around since 2008. The second reduction wheel, a nice amount of juice on that. Look at all that. And now that ratchet wheel screw can come off. So this is a 29 joule automatic with a power reserve indicator and a pointer date and is also sold to micro brands and the modding community as the NE57. And we'll take off the pallets while we're at it. A lot of you Seiko guys are probably seeing a lot of familiar parts from the 7S range and that's because the 4R is a direct descendant of the 7S family. Now I haven't touched any of this yet but if you look under the macro, you can see all those fine scratches here and there. But from a distance, you can't really tell. It's only when you get up close and scrutinize everything. You know someone at the Seiko assembly factory has been on the coffee. Or like I said, it could be just the glass dust that's gone in and dragged itself over those nice brand new parts we'll give them the benefit of the doubt you can see all the little bits of glass dust everywhere anyway look at it it's everywhere hello matey hello. Yeah. Hello. come on then i'm coming to you maybe not to me oh, everybody's missing you you know on the videos you've just gone up in the world now haven't you forgot all about us peasants mouth breather Wait for me. Long thing. The barrel and the train wheel bridge. Look at the scratch as well underneath all this. 
I haven't been anywhere near this. Tooling marks, I guess. <laughs> Scrutiny. Okay, I'm gonna go and eat. I'll dismantle the barrel and train bridge in a second. So we'll just remove this fourth wheel and the third wheel and pinion. There's a the little pinion underneath. And then we have this center wheel bridge, which is held in by one screw. And then we've got the escape wheel and we can take off the click. And the center wheel, and as you can see, all the keyless is on this side as well. So because of all the other bits and bobs on the movement, the keyless has been fitted to this side. And this is the yoke spring. And there's the yoke. Ooh, nice bit of juice there. And the setting lever is out. Some more juice on that. And then we can take out that stop lever. So we can just take out the sliding pinion. Seems to be an extra pinion there. Transmission wheel. Kill. Look at all that oil. So we've got a little clip on this reduction wheel. And we just push it out like that. No dramas and the reduction wheel with those magic fingers these always remind me of flies rubbing their hands together yes excellent smithers let's create a bubble in the watch market and then crash it <laughs> oh look at all that oil look at all that a ratchet sliding spring and we have this lower plate the barrel and train wheel bridge is got one screw and all this is fixed in to this side and you can see the thick grease on there obviously that's under a lot of torque this is a, a barrel complete so should i faff around with this let's do it just in case a bit of glass got into it that is long And it's a boy. Congratulations. See all that breaking grease should be on the sides. But we've got a lot of it on the base. What do I know, huh? I did my own Salvador Dali for you guys. Do you want to see it? What do you mean? What is it? It's a motorbike fish. So I'm just gonna cook you guys a little bit of dinner. We're cooking baskets. So if you guys remember the debacle with the hairspring in the reversal video, I'm just gonna make sure I've got no more shellac on these baskets. I'm gonna boil it all up and just taste it. Mmm, and we'll add a bit of this that I use for my water distiller. It might help, I don't know. See, you can see on the basket holder, signs of something sticky there. Oh, you see my hunch was right on the last video. As soon as that goes onto my heater in the cleaning machine that will melt and 
get on the parts. So before I get this in the wash in my fresh solution I want to get my motorbike fish into this container and I'm going to use some of the recycled solution just to get rid of any tiny particles of glass so as not to contaminate our solution. Oh no look at my motorbike fish. I'm sorry motorbike fish. And I'm just going to give it a quick bash in the ultrasonic just to shake anything off that's hiding away. Motorbike fish, motorbike fish, it's not your fault. Motorbike fish, motorbike fish, what are they feeding you? Motorbike fish, motorbike fish. I've had this in here for a few days and all the glass and the glue and everything has just fallen off. It must be at the bottom of the jar somewhere. Glass and glue all come up in one. Nice and easy. No dramas. So just gonna give that case a light buff. Nothing serious and that should be ready for the funky Seiko glass. And the case back still got its still got its protective film on it as you can see so i'll leave that on and give the outside a little buff and then we can peel it off so we're not shaping or anything like that we're just giving it a quick buff to get rid of those surface scratches Can you see the difference between the side of the lugs and the side of the case? You can already see those surface scratches are gone. So I'll just work on the, the lugs now.
you do it for too long, then you will start you will start losing the shape. So we're not cutting, we're just buffing. I'll do the same with the bezel, just a light buff. And the same with the case back, just a light buff. We don't want that white etching to come off. So just a quick pass over and that should give us a decent finish. And we'll call it a day there, I think. Nothing to see here, really. It's almost a black polish. Bring it on the wall as well. And on the base. Okay, go around it and even it all out. Get rid of any air bubbles. Now I couldn't see any other YouTube service video on this particular movement so I have tried to allocate more video time and concentrate more on the movement service in this video for those of you who are into servicing and I've counted around 77 oiling points and I have tried to include all of them in this edit. I have also tried to stay vocal or mumble as some of you call it as much as I could to help those who are more technically orientated. I'm gonna get my oil game on point now. The recommended Seiko oils are on the data sheet, which are predominantly S4, S6 and A03. But as always, you can use Swiss alternatives based on the general oiling principles, which I have covered previously. So I'm going to do a bit of pre-oiling and we'll start off by removing those cap jewels for those of you new to watchmaking that's my pinky and those are the stones Jimmy Bloody Hendrix here. Bit tricky to film, but we got there. I'm gonna just oil these three jewels from this side with my special ant cube oiler. 
the only gripe I think or only dramas you'd get with this movement is these diafix or diashock settings let's do this one as well can I get a good shot of this I don't know whether this has some sort of performance benefit but I prefer the other ones sort of three pointed ones from a servicing point of view there's no benefit to it it's worse I would say more fiddly so we'll just clean that There you go. We also need to oil this planetary reduction wheel on the back side, which is a bit like a ETA cannon pinion. And also, this date character setting unit on the front side and the back. And the back, as you can see, is similar to the ETA cannon pinion style. How am I gonna bloody do this? I can't even see. So they want us to put a little bit just around there. Look how cool that stem is. All them little notches for that date transmission wheel. Funky. So we just oil these little notches here, but Seiko also like us to oil the teeths. Put a few on the teeths, as they have suggested. Let's get the stem in. We have the stop lever. You don't oil the post on this, but you do oil this little contact point here. Just butt there, back and forth. So that's understandable. Motor bike fish. Slide into this little slip here. And we could have put a little bit of oil there, well, we should have. So we'll do that now. Yes, there. And now we've got that yoke spring, which does require a couple of screws. Check all the function of it now. One, two. Butter my shoe. Good. Center wheel and pinion. Just there. Just there. Just here. Get the main spring barrel in. And the escape wheel. There's a tiny little jewel on that center wheel bridge. And 
let's get that click spring in that famous Seiko click spring we've got the third wheel and pinion and we've got the fourth wheel and pinion just there center wheel so we want a little bit on top and some on the teeth you don't usually put oil on the teeth but Seiko insists you do and here we oil the hole and a little bit on top We'll get the reduction wheel in. We have the second reduction wheel with loads of little teeth on it. Tiny, tiny teeth. And Seiko wants us to oil these teeth all the way around. Stick a tiny bit on top. Just on that pivot there. That's good. Now that cheeky little motorbike fish stolen one of my screws but I found it. There are five screws in the picture. Yeah. I just oil that pallet jewels. Where'd it go? Shit. So it flew from there all the way across here. And my anti bounce mat. Thought you could run, huh? That's good. Now we move over to this side and we'll do a bit of oiling. Transmission wheel B. And then we can get that cannon pinion on. Just stab myself with my tweezers. Nice one. A little bit on the base, just there, and a little bit 
just here. Now Seiko recommend oiling the pallet fork jewel and we never oil the pallet fork jewel. We do as they say, just a tiny amount. Now we can get the minute wheel and pinion. We can get the hour wheel in. That needs to be oiled just on the top of the pinion. And we have this auxiliary main plate and we need to oil this little section here you can see where the rotation occurs just here so we just need to put a little bit of oil there and this can now go in just line it up and we have just one screw holding this in and we're doing a bit more oiling and a little bit here for the date driving wheel Corrector setting unit which will go here, and we need something a bit thinner for the date corrector setting wheel. And we'll get that date corrector setting wheel on. And we have this little date jumper, just there. And we'll get that date corrector setting unit in just here. And that probably needs to engage with this. Here we have the date driving wheel. So I did oil that pivoting hole just there. But I think I'll put a little bit on the pivot itself. Because that hole is so small. I think I just got it around the base. Hello mate. Oh, those things are so spicy, you know. Do you want some? You're going to get the runs, you know. Do you spicy? Go on then, I'll have some. Mmm, wow, wow, wow. Put in a little bowl for me then. Come on, I can't see. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Thanks, mate. Just leave Is it. Is enough for you, no? How about a little kiss? Thanks, Goofy. He's gonna eat that whole bag of spicy crisps and then have the runs. Intermediate center power reserve wheel. Just the center power reserve wheel. Big ass thing. Sun and planet unit. Well, a little bit here. Put some on the surfaces because these surfaces will be rubbing against the sun wheel. And a little bit here. And we need to go on the other side and oil in between that pinion and its arbor. We'll get underneath it somehow and we'll clean it up after. Some oil would have seeped in so. That should be enough. This is the sun wheel. I'm going to put a little bit on the base here. And a little bit on the tip. That will go on like so. And that will go in there. I've got two left over. One with the pinion, which goes on top. The intermediate power reserve wheel sits there and we have planetary reduction wheel and we pre-oil this and all that's left is this barrel arbor pinion and we can put a little bit of oil on this just here we have to line all of this up now that was quite easy Suspiciously too easy. So we can do a quick little test and if you look here, with the, this is where the pointer date goes. We should be able to see that set change over on quick set. So you can see the quick set works. And then if we put it in the time mode, We'll rotate it 24 hours. Let's also flip over. Here we go, here we go, 11.59, 12. And through through there, that window, you should be able to see also the power reserve wheel. So I don't want to be faffing around with any Wadiko and sliding and, and scraping that glass across that dial. So what I'll do is just dip it in some water just to let all that glass dust just float off gently 
and radical it afterwards. I could have run it under the tap. Let's see how that looks. There's a Rolex one waiting there, which you might see. So I think we got some of it off. You can see some of it inside there. Let's give it another. Okay, that's not looking too bad. And that still looks pretty horrific, doesn't it? But sadly, we won't be able to do much about those scratches. But we'll clean it up a bit more. So you can see that Seiko eye slightly bent a little bit. I'm going to try and straighten that out. Oh, I've got to be really careful here. I think that's done it. Because it's a layer of lacquer, I thought maybe I can do what these car restoration guys do. Sort of give it a teacup just to soften those scratches out. Let me give you a closer look. You can see how deep that is. I used a few tips and some poly watch just to soften up that scratch and it's, it's worked, but it looks a bit cloudy. So shall we try it? Let's experiment and see if it works out. In the interest of science, let's give it a try there's a pretty big one here, so what I'll do is I'll get some poly watch on there and just try and polish on top of that lacquer just to smoothen it out and stay stay along the sunburst grain. This will be our little experiment that we try. If we don't try, then we'll never know. I don't know whether to use these phone tips or some something clothy. These rubber ones I think are a bit too harsh. Let's try a little form. See if I can soften that scratch out. I probably have to do the whole thing just to even it out. There's a few microns of lacquer on it, so what's the worst that can happen, eh? We bugger it up and call it a day. That rhymed. So I can still see the scratch there. Hopefully we've softened it out a bit. I'm just going to rinse it some water you can see how deep that scratch is and I think it goes beyond the lacquer There's another one there a few more up here those ones I think I can flatten out but that one I think is a bit too much and you can see it's a bit cloudy but that might just be the residue from the poly watch so I might as well go all the way a different form this is all experimental based on my theory of tea cutting top surface of your car lacquer so try it at your own peril and don't come crying to me if you fuck us up oh joe told me to do it mom Taking my tools again. That's not bad actually. What do you reckon? Hey, Mr. Boggy Face. Oh, I'm actually pretty shocked with that. Oh yeah, that's looking alright actually. The scratch is still there, you can see it, but that's come out pretty nice. I'm chuffed with that. It's a bloody Jimi Hendrix, putting stuff everywhere. Go on, play the guitar. Cut a little bit of this fine polishing cloth, this fine cloth. This guy and his radical. Oh, I got it wet. 
It's all right, I think. I wipe some of the off with the fine cloth rather than that. So I've basically done another round. I wasn't satisfied. I think the foam might not be as fine as I'd hoped because it seemed a little bit on the cloudy side. I didn't mean to have this wet, but since it is wet, let's try it. Then I'll use another dry piece and this is really fine cloth so I shouldn't be scratching things up any further. <coughs> Easy now. Okay, let's try a fine, a dry piece now. What do you think you're doing, mate? I think I'm gonna call it a day we'll there. give our hands a little wipe down. Do you remember these in the state they were in? Hello, I'm trying to film here. What, your mum's a what, your mum's a what? These hands are chrome, so I won't even try and polish that little scratch out there, which again was probably caused by the glass, but we'll just wipe it all down. Put the plastic ring on, just do a bit more oiling. Just there. I'm okay. okay. Where'd you get a Nokia from? Nokia Scirocco. There you go, click. Just make sure the power reserves on full. We could have easily got a set of hands and a dial, but all we needed was a crystal. When you have an accident, some scars just never go away. As with us humans, those battle scars, I suppose, give us a reminder how lucky we are. I've got a big scar near my left eye. Can you see it? Just there in the corner there. And couple of centimeters away from my eyeball a big nail went in the sky is still there but it reminds me how close I was to losing an eye maybe so what I'm trying to say basically is this watch has got a few scars yeah in a roundabout kind of way I think I got the message out there So you can't really tell if there are any scratches on the dial unless you look really close at certain angles from afar or even this close with that lovely shiny glass and by flattening out all those scratches on the lacquer side it doesn't look too bad does it? In the hands as well you can't really tell they were mangled up so what do you reckon? If I take it under the light, even under the light it's not too bad is it? Even if I go really close. Kill! You just ruined the illusion now. So there you have it friends, written off and scarred for life. But we've given it some tender love and counselled it into accepting its past and to look forward to its future. With a strong motorbike fish heart and a beautiful plum face, I think this Seiko Presage is going to be just fine. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. So thank you all for chilling out with me today and I hope you enjoyed this one. Physical wounds heal to leave scars, but the mental scars of listening to bad singing may never heal. So look after yourselves folks, and those around you who have been affected. Peace, love and blessings to you all. And if the Almighty wills, I'll see you on the next one. ta ra -ra -bit.
you're obviously not their favorite watch 29 jewels and a scratched up face it used to be a hopeless basket case motorbike fish motorbike fish it's not your fault that's a wrap